peace, power, and love. Um, okay, that's not my normal opening. That's actually an inside joke that uh, I think at least one person is going to get. But greetings. My name is Diallo Kenyatta, and this is Pan Africanist Point of View, which will be basically a video blog where I'm going to be discussing some issues and events and historical happenings from a Pan Africanist point of view at least my particular Pan-Africanist point of view. Today I want to talk about Dr. King's assassination. Today is the 45th anniversary of his assassination by the U.S. government. And I don't really want to talk about King specifically and, and his specific impact. What I think is more relevant about Dr. King is whether you agree with him, his values, and his tactics or not. One thing we all agree is that his death marked the end of the civil rights movement and the civil rights era. And that's what I want to talk about, this concept of individual or charismatic leadership. Often from Garvey to King and every movement in between and even movements coming after King, they were always led by a particular charismatic or talented leader. And if that leader is compromised, subverted, or assassinated, we end up losing everything that that leader had built and we end up starting over, and it takes us generations to recoup. So what we need to do is not erect charismatic leaders, but begin to construct ideologies and methodologies and protocols that should lead us and should guide us. And then that way, the leaders become interchangeable. Not that they're not still valuable, not that they can't provide a service, but we can begin to be more resilient in our struggles and that's if you're conservative integrationist revolutionary radical pan-africanist so as an example who ask yourself who is the leader of capitalism and who could you take out or, or pay off to disrupt this global system of capitalism in fact ask yourself who is the leader of america i mean maybe if you're naive you would imagine barack obama or the U.S. Senate or Supreme Court, but most of us understand that the United States is led more so by an idea and concepts, and there's corporations, there's institutions and think tanks that come together to coordinate and control the power and resources, but there's no one central isolated leader. And that's what the Pan-Africanist Revolutionary Movement needs to construct and reinforce our ideology, our methodology, garner the resources and institutions needed to sustain it. And then that way we can begin to elect leaders that will be able to provide us with guidance, but we won't be vulnerable or have to rebuild from scratch if that leader is compromised in any way. So that's today's Pan-Africanist point of view, and it's dedicated to the memory and revolutionary legacy of Dr. King. And for those of you who know Dr. King in the last couple of years of his life will realize that's not a contradictory statement. He was moving towards a, a pan-Africanist and as well as a revolutionary analysis and beginning to move beyond civil rights and, and, and becoming a real threat to the enemies of, of humanity and, and our people specifically. And I'd also like to recommend a book that will help provide insight on the subversion of our charismatic leaders. So this uh, Pan-Africanist point of view book recommendation for the day will be the COINTELPRO papers by uh, Ward Churchill and Jim, uh, Jim Wall. Um, I'm not going to go into the book for, for time's sake. I'd like to keep these as short as possible. I'm looking forward to your feedback. You can reach me on Twitter at Diallo Kenyatta. Twitter, I think. My Twitter account's new. I only have 20 followers, maybe 19, so I'll start posting that stuff, or you can find me on Facebook, or you can find me in South Chicago as the uh, director of the Bloom Cooperative, working every day for, for Pan-Africanist unity, Pan-Africanist liberation, and for the overall dignity and betterment of our people. Thank you. Peace.